Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is the legendary photographer Jim Harrington. He's going to tell you a great story about hanging out with Joe Strummer. This was the 90s, and I was living in Nashville. And there was this uh, Russian bluegrass band, I forget their name, uh, oh, Bering Strait. But they were great, and they were cool, Russian kids. So I had a job to shoot their album cover. I went out to California and, and photographed them out in the desert. We did all these elaborate things. And so I think maybe the next day they were doing a showcase at the Roxy. So I went to the Roxy and took those pictures. And there was a party next door at the Rainbow Room. They're on Sunset, right on the rock scene. So, um, and it's for this band, I guess. So we all kind of go over to the Rainbow Room, and it's packed. It's like packed to where you can't even like move. There's like faces, like you're just in there. And there's Tony Brown. You know, if you don't know Tony Brown, he was a big producer and label guy at MCA Records Nashville in the '80s and '90s. He also played piano for Elvis Presley in the '70s. Cool guy. We always got along great. I always liked him and hadn't seen him in a while. And I bump into him. And it's like, oh, hey, Tony. And he's right. He goes, hey, Jim, how you doing? He goes, hey, do you know Joe Strummer? And he like spun me around and there's Joe Strummer's face like right there. And it's like, oh, hey, Joe. So we meet each other and then, you know, everybody's cool. It's a party. And anyway, the night ends and somehow everyone's gone but me and Joe Strummer at the bar, at the Rainbow Room. And, you know, because he's a curious and interesting guy, he's asking me about me. So I'm telling him about Nashville and photographing all these country people, and he loves that because he loves that kind of music. So he's like, oh, wow. And I'm telling him some obscure rockabilly people that I've dug up, and he's loving all this kind of country music, Tennessee stories. And then I say, well, enough about me. What are you doing here, Joe? And he said, well, today I sung a duet with Johnny fucking Cash. I said, oh, no, you're so up at Rick Rubens or something, right? And he goes, yeah. I said, that is unbelievable. So we started talking about Johnny, and uh, he was just so proud and so, like, over the moon about Johnny Cash and the fact that he had done this. He was like a schoolboy. So we kept drinking whiskey, and we were getting quite drunk and having a good time together. And so finally, I think we just got too drunk, and we had to leave. And um, he said, you know what you ought to do? You ought to come by the studio tomorrow. I said, I said, Joe, you're a big man, but can you be inviting me to Rick Rubens and Johnny Cash's? Like, oh, I got this guy I met at a bar to show up. He goes, no, it'll be fine. So he gave me, I still have it. He gave me this, uh, literally this. Piece of paper, not even this big, uh, with the map on it to Rick Rubin's house. And it was basically, it looked like a Y. We were drunk. He goes, here's a map. <laughs> it's like it just, just a line and a line. It's like, I'll find that. And I did. Um, so it was, you know, I guess he told me some stuff, but it was Rick Rubin. I think he's still there, but it's some big silent screen mansion from the 20s right off Sunset Boulevard. West Hollywood. So I went there in the morning, raging hangover. And I go to the gate and buzz and the big gate opens. And I go, you know, all around the property and swirling through the thing and around to the back. It's like a four car garage. Garage doors open and uh, Strummer walks out. Oh, you made it, mate. And so I get out of the car and it's like, how do you feel? He goes, I don't feel good either. <laughs> But he's already up, and he's. Um, I look in the garage, and on top of Rick Rubin's yellow Corvette and some other car, and on a table are these big pieces of poster paper. And there's lyrics, 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 um, words. And I'm like, uh, what are you doing, Joe? He goes, well, yesterday I did my duet with Johnny, but today I'm here. I kind of invited myself. I'm going to try and pitch a song to Johnny. I said, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so he was just writing. He goes, I, he goes, I'm writing a song kind of about a guy like Johnny, but Johnny can sing it. So Johnny can sing it, but it's about a guy like Johnny. So that, I'm trying all these different things. So we, um, he goes, you want a cup of tea? So we go up into Ruben's kitchen and um, 
I remember Strummer like, the only fucking drink is green tea. Where's it? There's any proper tea in there. So uh, then Rick Rubin kind of appeared. And I remember that it doesn't seem like Rick Rubin walks. He's just like on a floating carpet. He's just kind of showed up and then like, <laughs> but he found some black tea for us. So we made some good, strong black tea. And then we went back down to the garage, smoked a joint, did a few pictures. But then he goes, um, he goes, well, you're from the South. You know, you know this about this kind of stuff. What, what kind of, throw some words at me. What kind of, I'm like, oh, I don't know. So I started thinking about things. And um, I said, um, I, said uh, I, was just, I just started blurting out stuff. I said, King Cotton's down the road. I think he's, oh, that's a good one. And uh, doing some other ones. And then, uh, then his wife, Luce, came by and his daughter. And then, I don't know. So we hung out and Smokey Hormel came up out of the studio. And then Johnny came up. Johnny had been down in the studio the whole time. So he came up and left. And um, so anyway, we hung out all day. And then finally left. Traded a few emails with um, Joe, and then he, you know, fucking dies. Has a heart attack like six months later, I think. So anyway, I had ended up moving to Milwaukee for a couple of strange years, and um, I had this girlfriend, and one day we went to this coffee shop for a brunch for breakfast or something. It was kind of packed. And we went in there, and... Um, we got our favorite corner in the window where you're kind of facing everybody and not amongst them. And it's right by, beside the front door. And we're sitting there having our coffee. The door opens and this guy walks in that I kind of remember from a party, but I don't really know him. And the place is really loud, one of those loud morning places. And he goes, oh, you're thinking about both of you. I'm like, what? He goes, uh, your song's on that thing by then. I'm like, What's he saying? And she's like, I don't know. I can't hear him either. I'm like, what? Because you have things on the thing. And it's like, well, seems important, and I can't hear him. So I got up, and I said, what were you saying? And what's your name again? I, he goes, you know, we met at a party. Ah, oh, yeah. He goes, your song's on uh, that album. I said, what song, what album? He said, the new Joe Strummer album is out and posthumously released because he died, you know, and they released the stuff he was working on. He said, your song. I said, oh, did I tell you about that? <laughs> and I said, really? He goes, yeah, go check it out. Your line's in that song. I said, no shit. So anyway, I go find the record, and there's lyrics in it, and it's like, sure enough, King Cotton's Down the Road is in that song. I'm like, well, I'll be damned. No co-write um, credit. But I'm, so it's all right. Had he moved my tripod, I wouldn't have given him photo credit either. And a, I don't know, six months after he died or something, or maybe even a year, I get, um, I get a phone call. And, um, hello. Hi. Um, I was a friend of, uh, I'm a friend of Luce, uh, Joe Strummer's wife, and I was a friend of Joe. And um, they were like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry about Joe. I, he said, yeah, we're very close. And, um, you know, I still go over to their house. And I always have seen this picture of him, um, and I believe you took it. And he described it, and I said, yeah, that's mine. He goes, hey, I miss him so much. I just you know, wanted a little piece of him around the house. I was like, do you sell prints? I said, yeah. And he said, is there a way I could buy a print of this? Just I said, oh, yeah, absolutely. And I gave him a like super good, you know, family prize. It's, I'm not looking to profit on this with Joe dying and stuff. So, so I said, "Yeah, just you know, send me this much or something in shipping." Because it was, uh... and he goes, "Okay." And um, he said, "Send it to Blah 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 Limited." Um, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, "Wow!" That suddenly got kind of. I thought it was the old guy in the tweed jacket, the gardener next door, or something, you know. And suddenly it was, uh, send it to Something Enterprises. So I said, okay. I started um, wondering, who is this Something Something Enterprises? So I started Googling around. Well, turns out I had been, this Damien that I was talking to was none other than the richest artist in the history of art in the world, Damien Hurst. 
And I uh, gave him a good price, uh, and he's worth like, oh, no, he sold one thing for $100 million. I guess he's worth $300 million or something. But I gave him a good price on the sprint. But whatever. Again, I don't care. So. If you'd like to see some of Jim's photographs, I'll put a link down below. But if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and tell me down below what your favorite Joe Strummer song is. And I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you. That story drops more names than a drunk mailman. <laughs>